Assalamu alaikum everyone. In this episode, I want to talk about not getting your dua accepted and, you know, just making a lot more rational decisions when you feel a lot more emotional. So I know that there's a lot of times when we wake up for tahajjud, we make our duas, you know, we're reading our Quran, we're becoming such better Muslims, all because we want this one dua answered. And it can be really hard to expect that Allah won't answer your dua because, like, this is what you've been dying for. You've done everything you can for it. So this is your perfect reality and you really badly want this dua to be answered. And you know, time comes out and you find out that, oh, my dua was not answered and you know, Allah gave me something else instead or things didn't work out the way that I wanted to. And it can be really hard to navigate these feelings because it can take you down two paths. One, you can become very bitter. You can dissociate yourself with Allah. You can completely shut the whole thought out you could be like he didn't answer my dua it is what it is forget it i'm done right you can just get off this whole path of deen or two you can be rational about this you can turn back to allah and understand that he has wisdom behind his decision now hearing that oh allah knows better than you know allah has more wisdom than you do it's really hard like yes it's true but it's hard to hear every single day because there's two realities there's one your perfect reality and then there's what allah decides right so in your perfect reality this thing that you've been making law for it seems absolutely amazing it's going to level up your whole life it's just perfect and you don't see how it can harm you or anyone else around you but that's your perfect reality and allah the one who knows absolutely everything that's happening in the universe and the earth everywhere he knows he decided that this decision is probably not good for you. To give you a scenario, let's say you're about to take in a job and this is going to be like the best job of your lifetime. It was a really big job. You're going to sign like a 10-year contract. Who knows? Like it's a big deal, right? And someone came up to you and they're like, hey, are you going to make the decision for this job or are you going to let Allah make a decision? Girl, I know you'd say Allah. Because why would I want to make a decision for a job? Because I only know what Allah lets me know, right? I only know what's happening around me, maybe in my county, maybe in my own life. I only know what Allah lets me know. Why wouldn't I want the God that knows absolutely everything in this earth, in the universe, in the galaxies to make the decision for me? I would because I want the best decision. Think about it. The people who have more knowledge a lot of the times, they make a lot of better decisions. They're a lot more wise with the things they do as compared to somebody who doesn't contain that much knowledge, who doesn't care about those things. They tend to make careless decisions. Same concept. Us humans will forever be very less knowledgeable and very, you know, like we can't even compete on the level that Allah is, right? Because Allah, he's not like us. He's He's not human. He's very powerful. He knows everything. He know, He has so much knowledge. So why wouldn't you want Allah to make the decisions for you because you believe in his wisdom and you know he's going to do what's right for you but that happens in our every single day life if you haven't noticed it happens every single day in our life every single day we want something to happen this way but it happens another way we want this to happen but then this happens and that is the continuous cycle of life and maturing and really growing on your dean is realizing that these decisions that Allah is making is going to be far more better than the decisions that you have decided because let's be honest, we would all trust Allah's decision more than we trust ours. I know I would. And so you have to take that and realize that although this thing that I really desperately wanted didn't come true, I got something else out of it. And that is a relationship with God. Let me tell you something. They say that la ilaha illallah on a scale and then the whole world on another scale, on another side, is not even the same. Believing in one God is a lot more higher than this entire earth. So think about that put your brain into that your relationship that you created with god and just believing in him, the oneness of him and you know prophet muhammad peace be upon him being his messenger just this whole concept of islam you just creating a relationship a bond a good thought about that with god right that is a lot more higher than what you probably wanted let that sink in i know it's hard to feel i know it's hard to believe and sometimes religion is really hard to compare to worldly things because you can't see religion necessarily right like we can't see allah we can't we haven't seen the prophet peace be upon him but we know they're real we know that because i mean look at the quran look at the scientific miracles i don't know if you guys have heard about the river drying up but that was written in the quran and that's just not even one of the things that's there's been so many things that were written in the quran that's already came true 
and you should really use your logic because allah has given you logic and free will for a reason right if he made us like angels we would have never been able to experience his mercy we would never have been able to use our logic to rationalize and think that oh yeah this is the right religion look at how science naturally backs up this religion that is exactly why we were given a brain to use and to make the correct decisions i know that sounds harsh but think about it allah really planned this all out so why wouldn't you want to trust someone who knows this much as compared to trusting yourself so let that sink in i know that it may be hard that your dua didn't get answered i know that it's hard to cope with the feeling of knowing that your perfect reality probably just now got shattered but just know that this relationship that you created with allah in this meantime of you know praying the hajjah every night reading quran doing your five prayers whatever you've created with a cycle in your life this is a blessing and allah has given you this instead of your dua and let me tell you something a relationship with allah will get you far more in this world than anything else not just in this world and the hereafter and i always tell people this your soul is meant to outlive this earth it is you're not here just to be on this earth your worship your acts of goodness your acts of deed these things are going to take you not just in this world but in the hereafter and there's this quote and it's like if you sell this life for the next you win both of them but if you sell the next life for this life you lose both of them so let that sink in maybe what you wanted maybe the dua that you've been begging allah for didn't come true but you got a relationship with him instead and this relationship will help you in this earth and will help you in the hereafter now it is up to you to make the decision on whether you want to maintain this relationship you can be petty you can cut off all ties with allah you can disassociate, disassociate yourself and think that wow he didn't make my dua come true it's all over or you can realize that he has way more wisdom than you do he loves you way more than you do I always tell myself that too allah loves us more than we can love ourselves he really does he created you and he cares for you more than you can care for yourself we try to care for ourselves we try to do our little self-care our self-love but allah cares for you a lot more than you can care for yourself just look at the way that he decides things for you the way that there's goodness in the things that he decides for you so remember that and another thing that i really wanted to touch upon was making rational decisions you know the thing is as human beings when we can't find a solution to something we like to believe that it's our fault we like to believe that oh i can't figure out a problem with so and so or i can't figure out how to work out a situation with somebody and then it's my fault if you have tried absolutely every single thing in your power to make something work and it does not work that is not your fault stop blaming yourself and this is something that i've done for years i think everyone does it stop blaming yourself there are certain things that the solution for them is not on earth you have to make thought for it you have to ask allah for it you have to ask allah to change the condition to help you you have to you have to seek help and if you can't change something you can't help someone or you can't fix the situation why are you upset at yourself because if you've tried your hardest then why because it's not in your capability we're human beings we have a limit there's a reason why allah put limits on us it's because he's unlimited and that's why we make thought to him so we can gain help through him like i think about this a lot and like when we're sad we do not use any rational thinking like there's been times when like you know you could feel sad that something didn't work out with somebody or you know something didn't work out the way that you wanted it to sit down and ask yourself why am i sad okay so this is why i'm sad and then ask yourself can i fix this can i do anything to make it better if your answer is no then you have to stop owing yourself guilt let me tell you something after you work your hardest you do not owe yourself any guilt and do not be those people that think like oh if only i had done this if only i did this no i'm pretty sure there's a hadith i'm not i'm not i don't know what word by word how saying like stop wishing that things were different or that you worked out a different way because you're a human being you only do what you think is best in that moment everyone has a capability and in that moment you did what seemed right that's it forgive yourself allah probably forgives us more than we forgive ourselves i'm telling you the truth he really probably does there are some things that i hold on against myself that i'm i feel like allah's forgiven me for but i can't forgive myself for them and that within itself shows you how much allah loves you more than you love yourself so i want to finish this off by saying that if your dua didn't get answered and you know you worked your hardest you try your best to make rational decisions through times of hardship just know that allah is with you moreover i know how hard it can be when you really want to make things work out with someone or something or a scenario and things don't work out the way you want i want to remind you that the most biggest beauty of this religion is the fact that we are rewarded for our intention if you intend to be good you intend to be nice to somebody you intend to you know make up your prayers to do just you intend good 
Allah will reward you just for that. And just always, 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 always remember, Allah loves you more than you love yourself. Your soul is meant to outlive this earth and create something even greater. This whole life, it's a process of spiritual growth, trying to become a better person, and trying to be on your deen. Now how you choose to go about all of this is your choice. But just know that even if you've grown so far from Allah, like you haven't even prayed in like 10 years, if you just right now open up your prayer mat and you make a prayer, you do, you know, you do your usr prayer, you'll be right on, you'll be right on track again. Just ask for forgiveness. Your Lord loves you. He has lots of wisdom. He knows better than you know. And understand that you're a human being who has limits. That's why we pray to the one who's unlimited.